In this video, we're going to take a short look at Neo4j, one of the graph databases commonly in use today. Neo4j is an open source database, which gives certain advantages involving security, uh, likelihood of remaining available into the future, support options, and cost. Uh, it is currently the most popular graph database in use. Uh, it's important to know that Neo4j is designed to be transactional in nature and ACID compliant. And it's also designed for scalability, which means if you need to work with massive data in a distributed environment, Neo4j will do that. There are really only three basic items in Neo4j. The first is a node, which you can think of as a document that has certain properties. Uh, and the properties are typically stored in key value pairs, very similar to document databases such as MongoDB. Uh, there are also edges, or what Neo4j will call relationships, uh, between the different nodes. And those relationships can also store properties. So this is often described as following a property graph model. You've got nodes and you've got edges, which are the basic building blocks of graphs, and each of those items can then contain attributes or properties. Here's a simple example. Suppose we want to store flight information across the United States in a graph database. Uh, that makes sense since flights connect cities, and so there's a, a certain amount of connectivity that we might want to capture with our database here. Uh, and so here you can see here are four rows from a data set uh, where we've got a flight number. That'll be the ID for each flight. And then you've got the airline, the departure airport, the arrival airport, and the capacity for the flight. So we need to figure out what's the right way to model that. Here's a first try. Uh, you might think it makes sense to have each airport be a node and then use the flight information as the connecting relationship between the airports. Uh, however, that's going to have one fatal flaw, uh, which is to say you'll often have multiple flights between airports, and we typically don't want to have several of the same kind of relationship between two different nodes. We want to keep just one of each kind of relationship between nodes. And so if we have multiple flights from one airport to another, that won't work in Neo4j very well. So here's a better try. Uh, what we'll do is we'll have an object for each airport, or a node for each airport, but we'll also have a node for each flight. And then what we'll do is we'll use relationships between the flight and its departure airport and its arrival airport. And so we'll be able to use those relationships to query for different flights, which airports they're going to, which airports they're coming from, or for instance we might ask which flights are coming into a particular airport, which flights are coming out of a particular airport, and so on. And then what we can do is we can assign properties to each of these objects. So for instance, the airport we might assign properties for the city and the state. Uh, we might assign properties for the number of gates or things like that. Uh, for each flight we might assign properties such as uh, what airline it's on, uh, what the capacity is for the flight, and so on. Uh, the departure and the arrival, uh, there might be different attributes that we would assign to those relationships, uh, and so on. So each of these objects can store properties. That's why we call it a property graph model. So here's what we'll study in the next few lessons. Uh, we'll take a look at what it means to install Neo4j. It's a relatively straightforward process, uh, but we'll take a look at that. And we'll have versions for both Windows and Unix-based environments. Uh, we'll then take a brief look at how to acquire data and put it into Neo4j. And we'll do that both from a command line perspective uh, as well as a uh, batch import perspective. We'll also take a look at what it takes in order to manipulate data. Suppose you need to update information, you need to delete old objects, things like that. We'll take a look at the basics for that. We'll look at some simple queries, how to build the queries within Neo4j. Uh, and then finally, we'll take a look at some common use cases for Neo4j.